Hello, my name is Matt Bernhard. I'm a PhD student at the University of Michigan, and I'm here to talk to you today about a new type of voting equipment called the ballot marking device. This is work I did in conjunction with my co-authors, Allison McDonald, Henry Mang, Jensen Hua, Nicole Bajaj, Kevin Chang, and my thesis advisor, Alex Halderman. So what is a ballot marking device? A BMD is a computerized interface in which voters can mark their uh, preferred choices on a screen, uh, typically a touch screen, and then their choices are printed out on paper that they can review before they cast it. Uh, ballot marking devices are extraordinarily popular across the United States, being used in nearly every state, uh, and their popularity is only on the rise. The security model for BMDs looks something a little bit like this. On the left, the voters make their selections, the ballot gets printed out, uh, they then have the opportunity to review the printed ballot to make sure that it's correct, and then deposit it in the scanner. The election results are tabulated and then uh, the paper ballots are audited and, and that the results of that audit are compared against the reported results from the scanners. There's sort of two attacks against ballot marking device systems. Uh, you can attack the scanner, uh, which would cause the reported results uh, that the tabulation system produces to be incorrect, but this is fairly, fairly easily defeated with a post-election audit. Uh, and once auditors looked at enough paper, they would be able to see that the outcome reported was not correct, and then a full hand recount would, would be done to completely thwart the attack. The other way to attack a BMD is by compromising the touchscreen or the printer uh, so that the paper that gets printed out doesn't show the results or doesn't show the vote that the voter intended to cast. Uh, you'll note here that the paper trail is now compromised, so any post election audit would confirm the wrong result. Even though the voters wanted to vote one way, uh, the computer system would still tabulate it the other way, and a post-election audit wouldn't catch this. But in principle, this is a trivially defeated attack, uh, so long as voters review their ballot printouts before putting them in the scanner. Although we don't actually know uh, how voters behave in this situation. It's unclear whether they check their ballots at a high enough rate to provide any kind of security. And that's what we wanted to study. Uh, Many have been speculating that ballot marking devices are fundamentally insecure. Uh, in particular, Philip Stark has speculated that voters are not likely to check their ballots on their own. And not only that, but that they lack the cognitive ability to remember everything they wanted to vote for and notice problems on the ballot. And prior work in the, in, uh, on voting equipment supports this. Uh, work done out of Rice University and uh, the uh, uh, Caltech uh, voting project uh, in the mid 2000s looked at uh, both review screens on electronic voting machines as well as paper tapes produced by direct recording electronic voting machines and both found that people had trouble verifying and, and detecting when uh, changes were introduced to the uh, paper trail. However, uh, other work in other domains, for example, in uh, phishing or certificate warnings, uh, suggests that there are warnings we can provide voters that will improve their ability to verify uh, that, that their choices were correctly recorded. And that's what we really wanted to study. We wanted to first characterize the way, you know, whether people do this thing or not, and then also find ways to improve it, which leads me to our, our research questions, which are, first of all, as the, you know, the title of the talk in the paper is, can voters do this thing? Can they detect errors introduced on the paper ballot? And are there interventions that can improve the rate at which people detect? To support these two questions, we came up with several other research questions. For example, does the ballot style matter? And I'll explain more about that in a second. Does the candidate position on the ballot matter? So if I'm an attacker, I probably only care about the president or the Senate or the state legislature races. I probably don't care about Ann Arbor dog catcher. So if voters are more likely to notice that I've changed a race higher up on the ballot, that's bad for me. That constrains my attack surface. We wanted to know, does the type of manipulation matter? Again, if I'm this surreptitious attacker that wants to stay undetected, if there is a particular kind of way I can manipulate people's votes that makes it harder for them to detect, that's good news for me. And finally, we wanted to characterize how sensitive voters are to the warnings uh, to see what kind of flexibility we have in rolling out uh, policy recommendations about ballot marking devices. To answer these questions, we ran a between subjects study with 241 participants in Ann Arbor. You can see here that the Ann Arbor District Library was super helpful in providing a location for us to run our mock election. The great thing about this particular room is that the actual 2018 midterms in Ann Arbor were held in this room, as will the 2020 general. <clears throat> and you can see our general polling place setup. The, the voters come in on the left, they fill out a IRB consent form, then they move to the machines in the back and vote. And then they take their printed ballots and deposit them in the scanner on the right. Uh, after they voted, they also took a short exit survey. 
To provide uh, an even more realistic election environment, uh, we wanted to use real voting machines. So we took on the left an AccuVote TSX voting machine, which is a direct recording electronic voting machine that is still set to be used in 2020, and hacked its firmware so that we could print a paper ballot corresponding to our participants' selections, as you can see by the printer below the machine. On the right, uh, we hacked an AccuVote OS scanner, which again will also be used in the 2020 elections, to scan people's ballots. I mentioned that one of our questions was about ballot style. To provide more realism uh, for our mock election, we used a truncated version of the Ann Arbor 2018 midterm ballot. Uh, we basically took the first 13 races on the ballot, and that was more for time constraints and paper constraints. And you can see on the left is the actual ballot style that people voted in 2018. Uh, the only modification we made was the barcodes at the top, but otherwise it looks exactly like a handmarked ballot that you would have filled out uh, here in Ann Arbor in 2018. On the right is a ballot summary card, which you can see is a much more compact form of representing the voter selections. It basically just lists the race and the candidate that the voter voted for. And there's been some discussion about what, which of these two formats will provide a, a better, more verifiable ballot. Uh, some thinking that the, the increased information in the ballot on the left would make it harder, some thinking that the decreased information on the right would make it harder. Uh, so that's one of, the, one of our research questions. On every single ballot, uh, we opted to manipulate one race that a voter participated in. Uh, the races were selected at random, uh, and we could either deselect a choice, we could move a vote from candidate A to candidate B, or we could uh, introduce a choice if, if the voter didn't make a mark. To answer our research questions, we ran a battery of nine experiments to evaluate which particular factors impact detection. Two of our experiments were about ballot style that I already sort of discussed. Another experiment was about deselecting uh, a candidate on the ballot rather than moving that mark to a different candidate. Uh, again, under the assumption that if you're particularly invested in a, in a candidate, you might be more likely to notice when a different candidate in the race you care about was chosen. We also looked at three sets of poll worker instructions to evaluate how sensitive voters were to particular warnings that we could give them. In addition to that, we also ran two of our instruction sets with slates. Uh, which is just a random uh, pre-assigned uh, list of candidates that we wanted the voters to vote. This is both uh, to answer the question about cognitive ability, did, did having a reference uh, sheet of choices that the voters wanted to vote for help them detect what was wrong, and also for comparison with prior work that did use slates. And finally, we wanted to test the usage of a sign because it's a fairly trivial uh, policy recommendation that we could make if people could just slap a sign on the wall and see that they're uh, ballot marking devices suddenly become more secure. As I mentioned already, we recruited 241 participants from around Ann Arbor. You can see their demographics here. Our participants were overwhelmingly white, largely female, and incredibly well-educated, and all three of those reflect the population trends in Ann Arbor. Uh, unfortunately, it's not very representative of the nation, and I will discuss that a little bit more uh, towards the end. And the two key data points that we were looking for in our experiment was whether participants reviewed the sheet of paper that came out of the voting machine, and also if they did, whether they reported that they found a problem on the piece of paper. And so you can see uh, we had poll workers uh, stationed around the precinct. You can see Nick over there in the white shirt um, to help voters out if they were confused about using the equipment and also for the voters to report problems if they found them. Our experiments largely broke up into four different buckets. Um, the first bucket was our, what we termed our non-intervention experiments, experiments where we didn't actually change the setup of the polling place or anything like that. We just manipulated uh, the way that the ballots were being produced. So as I mentioned, we ran an experiment with regular ballots, uh, an experiment with summary ballot cards, and then a, an experiment with uh, summary ballots where we deselected candidates. And you can see that all three of these were almost identical. The, review rate hovered around 40%, and the detection and reporting rate hovered around 7%, uh, which is a little depressing. It, it seems to confirm the hypothesis that voters don't look at the paper, and when they do, they don't find problems. Next, we have our intervention experiments that didn't appear to do very much. So unfortunately, using a sign didn't seem to do much, a passive warning that doesn't interact with the voters, that the, vo the voters don't have to interact with at all, didn't seem to do anything. One note about the incredibly low reviewing rate there, uh, it was towards the end of the, the, end of the day, so we, we think that people were just trying to get in and out of our uh, experiment as, as quickly as possible. Uh, and we also found that instructing the voters to do something while they're checking in 
before they have voted is not very helpful. You can see the uh, review rate rates here and the detection rates were uh, pretty much exactly the same as the baseline, and none of these were statistically significantly different. Finally, we started to see some progress with our scripts uh, once we positioned a poll worker at the scanner. Um, having the poll worker interrupt the voters as they have the paper ballot in their hand before they can deposit it seemed to be the sort of secret sauce to getting them to find problems and, and to actually look at the paper. We had two different scripts for this. Uh, one, the poll worker at the scanner just informed the voters that the paper ballot is the official record of the vote, uh, and the other was explicitly asking the voters if they took an action, if they carefully reviewed the ballot. And you can see that our, uh, our review rates here were a little bit higher uh, in one experiment and about the same in the other, but our detection rates were, were higher in both. Um, none of these numbers were statistically significantly different, but it was at least promising for us and, and indicated that there may be some ways to improve detection rates. That brings me to our final bucket of experiments, which were the sort of effective experiments. Uh, both of these were the experiments in which we use slates. You can see for both of these with, with the same two scripts as before, our review rates and our reporting rates went way, way up, way above the baseline rates. In the last experiment, um, both of those numbers were statistically significantly different from our baseline. Some other findings, uh, we tended to find that voters who reviewed the ballot carefully did report errors. Uh, we found that with a two sample permutation P of less than uh, 0.01. Uh, so it, it doesn't seem to be the case that voters are unable to detect things. It just seems to be the case that they don't spend the time to look at the paper. Uh, and that's actually echoed by, by forthcoming work by Cordum et al. Uh, out of Rice uh, as well. <clears throat> we did find that uh, the position of the error had a significant impact. Uh, so the higher up uh, on the ballot a race was, the more likely people were to find that something had gone wrong. Uh, our Pearson, Pearson's there was 0.6, which is a, a moderate effect size. And we also found some fairly weak evidence that voters may be sensitive to language. Uh, some of our uh, scripting experiments had, had significantly different results depending on the language we used. Um, and again, that, that sort of echoes work in, in other domains uh, like the Alice in Morning Land paper. So going back to our research questions, uh, we found that voters are capable of detecting errors on the paper ballot. It just requires them to actually review the ballot. Uh, we did find that there were interventions that could significantly improve the rate at which people found problems. Um, we found that the ballot style didn't really matter. We found that candidate position did matter. So the higher, higher up a candidate, uh, a race or a candidate was, the more likely people were to detect. We found that the type of manipulation didn't seem to make a difference. And finally, it, it appears that the warnings, uh, the, the content of the warnings does matter. Our evidence was slightly less strong than for the other questions, but uh, it appears to have made a difference. I want to uh, briefly mention our, some limitations of our study. Um, it is difficult to simulate a realistic election environment. It's entirely possible that our participants didn't have as much buy-in in our process as they would in a real election setting. Um, although we found that participants, by and large, seemed to be taking it seriously. Um, we had several people complain about being forced to vote for candidates they didn't want to vote for. Uh, we, had, uh, we actually had a typo in our uh, electronic interface, and several voters found it and, and complained to us about it, indicating that they were carefully reading the ballot. Um, and you know, we had voters who said things like this, I noticed that a Republican was selected on my ballot, and I almost never vote Republican. So it, it appears that people were actually invested in our experiment. Our sample, as I mentioned before, is not super generalizable, um, again, because it is uh, so, so white, so well-educated, uh, largely female, that does not generalize well to populations outside of Ann Arbor. Although, again, the, the quarter work that is forthcoming, a okay, much more diverse sample uh, in Houston, uh, and found very similar results. So that's encouraging. Uh, and, and as always, uh, our findings need a little bit more replication, um, just because, uh, you know, we found statistical significance doesn't guarantee that our results uh, will apply everywhere. So I, I wanna close with some takeaways here. Um, voters can review their printed ballots and find problems, it's just that they don't. And so that is the key problem here. It's not that there's something fundamentally incompatible with security with BNB systems. Um, voters' decision to review can be impacted by increasing interventions, uh, it, which is encouraging. It means that we can probably find sophisticated policy solutions to improve the security of BNBs. However, the jury's still out uh, because we didn't find, uh, you know, we weren't seeing 100% catch rates or anything like that. Um, it is not totally clear that BMBs are, will ever get to a 
place where they can be guaranteed to be secure. Uh, however, the issues that apply to BNBs also apply to other election security domains as well. For example, hand-marked paper ballots, if there is a printing error on the ballot that causes a candidate name to be misspelled or, or whatever, um, if voters aren't primed to look for that and it somehow manages to make it through the uh, uh, quality control system, uh, that could still impact election results. So thanks for watching my talk. I know this is sort of a strange format. Um, I'm going to stick around online for a few minutes uh, after this goes live. And uh, you can reach me also at my email address and Twitter handle here. Thanks.